that all the earth rejoices, all the earth rejoices. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God! Sing with me, how great is our God!
take me places I've never been before You show me visions that only you can give And I love it when you speak to me I had flipped it on. Yeah, there we go. All right. <clears throat> okay, I thought I had turned it on coming up here. Praise God. How do you like this, guys? 1975 is the last time this was worn in a football game. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I had shoulder pads under it. Ha, <laughs> ha, 
<clears throat> Thank you, son. Yeah, the year I graduated, the, my, my senior year, we were able to um, uh, buy our jerseys because they were getting new ones the next year. So I got my, my this one, which was the home jersey and the away jerseys. And uh, my away jersey, it was a different material. It it's, it's, looks like rats have been in it. I can't wear it, but I have it, you know. Hallelujah. Yeah, I forgot what we paid for it, 20 bucks to get the both of them or something back then. Of course, you know, it was 1975. I mean, good gracious. Hallelujah. Yep. There were shoulder pads under there. I mean, big ones. <laughs> Just, okay. It is stretchy material, though. It, it does. Oh, anyway. It's back to school Sunday. And a few of us got the memo. Several didn't. Didn't wear your school colors. J Janie's rocking her East Carolina Pirates. You wouldn't be able to handle her high school colors. Kelly green and baby blue. Yeah. Yeah. Preppy. You know, we, we, we county folk didn't like her school. We were all country folk, you know, worked at the backfields. They were <sniffs> Kelly green and baby blue. Like, oh, disgusting. <laughs> Hallelujah. Rose high. Anyway, praise the Lord. We're glad to have you all this morning. Dennis has got his jersey on, Shannon, Jesse, Cap, Janie. Who else? Oh, you got the colors. Green and gold. All right. That was my colors. See, green and gold. Hallelujah. All right. Who else got your high school colors on? Okay, yeah, you got black and gold. All right. So Some folks are stretching it now. Just. Just happened to happen to heck. <laughs> well, school is starting back, and you know everybody's going back into school. So we just decided we had, uh, you know, um, back to school Sunday. So I think we have something for all of our kids. Hallelujah! So you know, make sure y'all don't get out of here without uh, seeing my wife. And um, uh, any announcements going on? Our number one. Uh, this is birthday week for the Taylor family. Cap, me, Janie. Hallelujah. Huh? And Elena, who's out with some family member at Oak Island celebrating her birthday. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a picture on Facebook. Now, if you're wondering who the guy in the picture with her is, it's the beardless Nathan. <laughs> it's like, who is that? One? Oh, that's Nathan. <laughs> yeah, we, we like the beardless Nathan. <laughs> Nathan, Nathan likes, I, 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 anyway. Grizzly Adams is just not our thing. Hallelujah. <laughs> just, just saying, son, publicly making a declaration here. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're, you know, I guess, I guess we shouldn't have had Dr. Bill so much as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Van Crouch came one time, looked down at Dr. Bill one say, uh, uh, tell him, in case you didn't know, there's a dead animal up on your chin. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, don't forget Wednesday night Bible study. We will resume prayer on the 13th, I believe it is, of September. Zoom prayer. Okay? We are we're, um, uh, too much going on. Uh, next Tuesday, Jamie and I will be on our way back from Myrtle Beach. We're going to part of our RMAI regional. We're taking, an extra, we're taking a day off of work, which was <laughs> pulling teeth, but we got it that Tuesday after Labor Day to be at the um, RMEI regional retreat because as a director, they'd like for us to be there. And I can't make it for the whole thing because that means four days off instead of one. So um, anyway, we'll be driving back on Tuesday night. So we couldn't do prayer then. It was that you don't need to be praying and driving, you know. I mean, I could have a Holy Ghost conniption and, you know, behind the wheel of a car. That just wouldn't be a good thing. Hallelujah. All right. So. Uh, the 13th, we will resume, but it will be Zoom prayer. And, of course, Wednesday nights, we are on, on track on Wednesday nights already. And next month is going to be busy. We've got um, uh, Jess and Kat will be hold, uh, taking the 18th service for um, sharing on Expedition Turkey. Hallelujah. And um, what's going on there? Remember, when, when we do things, if, if it's not Pastor Ed doesn't do it. Something the church is doing is part of what we're doing. Okay. Um, and so they'll be sharing on Expedition Turkey, 
And then on uh, the 25th, make sure your calendars are marked for that also, um, we will be having Dean Tad Gregorich, uh, the Dean of Rhema Bible Training College in Tulsa. Uh, he will be uh, ministering and conducting our church dedication. So homecoming and church dedication catered by Sidwills Catering. Hallelujah. Mashed potatoes, I mean, um, meatloaf, mashed potatoes, roasted chicken, cabbage, cornbread. Hallelujah. And then I think, uh, I think Ellie, or Ellie did, you, you volunteered on the mac and cheese, right? Just to have mac and cheese. Um, is everybody kids okay with meatloaf and roasted chicken? Okay, we don't have any. I don't eat that. I don't eat hot dogs. Do we have any of those? Because we, we can accommodate the only eat hot dogs thing, if that's what you do. Okay? When I was your age, when I was your guys' age, I would have been the one of the ones going, I only eat hot dogs. You know, what's that? That's funny sounding chicken? I don't do that. You know, if it sounded funny, I didn't eat it. I got news for you. I still don't. You know, if it's got some funky name to it. Brussels, well, Brussels sprouts doesn't have a weird name. They just, I can't, I can't stand to even spell them cooking. Hallelujah. That and um, broccoli. I got people in the head. I mean, my family all choose me out. Dad, try it. Dad, try it. Dad, try it. Y'all can beat me down. I am not eating it. They gang up the whole bunch. Just try it. Just try it. Here, try it. Try it. It'll change your life. No, it won't. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Me and Brother Bill. And, I, I find when, and when uh, George Bush was president, and when he said that he didn't eat broccoli, I was like, if the president of the United States don't have to eat it, I don't either. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, anyway. And then the... Uh, not hardcore date yet, probably the last of uh, October, early November, uh, our Down East Annual Barbecue and Fried Chicken. Okay? So that, that's be coming up. So it's going to get busy here in the fall. Hallelujah. Uh, we have, we've gotten everything done outside um, other than maintenance. Um, my daughter is going to get me the graphic. You did. I never saw it. Send it again. Hallelujah. High priority, bells, whistles, whatever. Hallelujah. Um, they're going to make it school. The guy's got a laser cutter that cuts materials for the Victory Overlook sign. That'll be our last outdoor doohickey. Okay? Okay. Victory Overlook, elevation 300 and 863 feet Eight out there at the picnic tables. We went out there with the GPS and measured it. Amen? So, Victory Overlook. So, you're sitting out there just looking at the victory that the Lord brought up here. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And so um, we're excited. Going to be a good time together. And uh, get some folk in the building. Go make disciples of men. Bring them in. Amen. I mean, go into the highways and byways. Send the brute squad if you have to. Okay. I mean, pull a Mr. T, drug him and let him wake up in church. Y'all remember the A-team? Mr. T wouldn't fly, so they had to drug him and get him on the plane. <laughs> to get to where they're going. He wakes up, he's ready to choke somebody. Hallelujah. A pity to fool. All right. It's time to give. If you need an offering envelope, seat backs in front of you, grab one. If you're somewhere that you can't see one, raise your hand and Brother Joe will help you. Um, giving electronically, we're still using the uh, old hashtags and so forth. Uh, that is not, has not been um, set up yet. Uh, there's a couple things. we gotta, we got to change our thing with the IRS. And Dr. Bill, can you get that? Since you the paperwork to me on that, to change that, hallelujah, because we got we got to send it to the IRS, let them know so we can send it to Cash App and stuff that we have changed and re-registered with the IRS, hallelujah, and um, which it has to be done because we're now re legally registered in North Carolina as this corporation of Expedition Church of the Triad, Inc., okay, Expedition Church of the Triad, Inc., so praise God, all righty, you know, Jesus said, give it, it shall be given unto you, how? Shall? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse and prove me now herewith. Uh, say at the Lord of hosts and see if I will not open up unto you the. And what? 
And the Greek says what? I mean, the margin says what? The Hebrew says what? Empty out upon you. Blessings you do not have room enough to receive. Amen. Y'all been taught well. Amen. Praise the Lord. So thank God. You know, the, the, the promises of tithing and giving are biblical, are well-founded in Scripture, and they work. Amen. Why? Because God is true to his word. I said God is true to his word. Hallelujah. Father, we bless the people now as they tithe, as they give, as they walk in accordance with your holy written word and act upon it in faith. And we thank you that you do open up the windows of heaven. You do empty out upon us blessings we don't have room enough to receive. And we thank you we're a delightsome lamb. We lend to many and we don't borrow. Hallelujah. And we decree and declare that you have rebuked the devourer for our sake. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Brother Joe, go ahead and receive the in-house. Hallelujah. Those giving on electronically, thank you for sending that in. Amen. Got folks right here, see right here in church and give electronically. Well, it's just, it's just, it's easier. I mean, for a lot of people, it's just easier. I forgot my checkbook. You don't have to, Amen. All righty. Well, it's time for the little guys. And I say, yeah, in comparison, or the younger ones. The younger ones. How do they have that? You go to class, so march it on out. Amen. I, I still can't get over how, how that girl has shot up. I look back, I think, yeah, yeah no way. All right. Um, I, I have um, real quick, um, we need uh, help with something. Um, until we don't have any room for parking, we're asking you not to park straight in front of these doors. And here's why. The reflection from the windshield hits and comes in, and it'll sometimes hit me in the eye. It'll put, it'll, it'll put fate, um, weird lighting on the platform. So if you could just, you know, park over one more space. But when you look up, if you're lying with the doors, don't park there, please. Okay? I'm not fussing at anybody. You have no way of knowing and we've been meaning to say something for some time. It's it's simply because of the angle of the sun when it hits your windshield. And we got we've had several different people do it, and, and it's it's just because okay, there's an empty space. I get it. I totally get it. But if you're directly in line with here, facing this direction with your car, that sun hits and it just comes right in. And um, we love getting rid of the other doors, but it did create a problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. That we didn't know it was going to create a problem until we got rid of the other doors and got the glass ones put in. Once the glass ones went in, we're like, oh, that's a problem. Hallelujah. And the, and the, ca and the camera people are always going, <sighs> okay? So, uh, if you, so if you drive up at some point in time and we got orange cones out there, don't get out and move them. <laughs> that would be the reason. And, and, and listen, we, we're glad you're here. We're so happy to have you. We hate to even say anything. But it, but it is, a, it's created an issue that we really need to address. Um, if you um, um, look up here, when, like when that door was open, the Expedition logo from the front door was showing up on the wall, <laughs> okay, because uh, where the sun was at that moment. So just anyway, uh, we'd appreciate your assistance with that and uh, understand that we, we are thrilled. For, uh, there it is, right there, see it? That's from the front door. <laughs> Can y'all see that? Yeah, there's a logo from the front door. Okay, and, and now Cap is doing rabbits and stuff. <laughs> and I'm supposed to preach after that. So, um, but understand, we are thrilled you're here. We are happy to have you in the building. We're so excited you came. But if you could just help us out with that. Okay? All right. Now, if we're full up and there's nowhere else to park, we'll live with it. Okay? Might go buy a shield that we put in front of the doors. I don't, I don't know. Hallelujah. Open your Bibles, if you will, once again to the uh, book of Acts, chapter 2. kind of hard to believe I wore this 42 years ago. It's 70, 75? 40, 
47, thank you. 75? Yep, and we're three years from, yeah, from 50. So 47 years ago, we lost to Green Central, which made us co-champions for the conference that year. Only one team went to the state playoffs. Uh, we had missed a field goal. It was 10 to 7 with time running out. Um, I went to the coach and said, Coach, I blocked their punt last year. And I had the year before I had blocked the punt for that kicker and uh, their field, their, um, their punt punter and recovered the end zone for my only touchdown in high school. I was a lineman. Okay. Broke through the line. He said, well, Taylor, get in there then. So I go busted in there. Wild man, here he comes. That was my nickname, by the way. I know y'all can't envision that. <laughs> That's what the coaches call me, wild man. Somewhat justifiable. <laughs> like I said before, I used to beat lockers in with my head to get psyched up before the football game without the helmet on. Okay? I would hit, hit cinder block walls with my head to intimidate people. So I'm going, that explains so much faster. Anyway, <laughs> hallelujah. Um, break through the line. I did partially block the punt. It caught this much of my hand over here, but not enough to knock it back because they were backed up in there. We could have won the game. That much more, that much more. And we were in the state playoffs. But it didn't happen. I didn't think about that until I put this on this morning. <laughs> And then all those memories come rushing back. We were so close. It's about like Frankie Valley, but so far away. All righty. And uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 42. Amen. Father, we thank you for our time together. Thank you as we break the bread of life, that the Spirit of God will take and will share and minister that which he desires to be shared, that which will equip and establish us in your purposes and plans, and enable us to carry forth and to do the will, the work, and the purposes of God in the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse 42 says, uh, and they continued, well, let's back up. Oh, 37, down when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said, then repent and be baptized, every one, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he, te did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they, uh, then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now, that's a meeting. Amen? Man, we think if we get one person saved somewhere, we've done something. Come on now. They go out and preach 3,000 people get saved. Just out here, I mean, this is, you know, like, I, I remember when, um, when Mark Brzee was going into East Germany before the Iron Curtain fell, and they went into a building, and they were, they were holding services. Uh, Brother Hagin's book, The Authority of the Believer, had gotten over in there, and the pastors were praying for, for the Iron Curtain to come down. And here's her confession. The Iron Curtain will fall, and there will be no bloodshed in our country. Nobody was killed in East Germany during the, during the fall of the Iron Curtain. Now, other countries there were. They took governmental leaders and went out and hung them and stuff. And I mean, they did all kinds of stuff. But East Germany was praying, there'll be no bloodshed in our country. And that's exactly what happened. Hallelujah. It was a, re it was a reunification when I had any bloodshed. <coughs> they had the whatever, the chancellor, whoever he was, captured and were going to, and somebody stopped them. Hallelujah. Amen. And, um, but... So he, but before, before the curtain fell, he was in there doing meetings. And they had a, they had a meeting. They had 1,500 people in there. And so he's you know, speaking with an interpreter. And that's, a, that's, a, that's an adventure in itself. I guess Jesse Cat just got to experience that. Now, it's an adventure of yourself if you're a teacher. If you're a preacher, it's really an adventure. Now, I'm just going to tell you. When you're, when you're kind of getting into your cadence, and then you have to stop and let them interpret 
There was a couple times I just ran right over top of them. I mean, they're just, they're trying to keep up, and I'm gone. You know, then I had to come to myself, oh, stop, back up. <laughs> um, anyway, and the Germans, anyway, it takes 15 minutes longer to say the same thing we say in three. <laughs> you ever seen the words? They're just long. Okay? Um, just telling you the truth. I was, preaching, I was preaching in Bible school one time and, and said, you know, the Word of God is planted in your heart and it germinates. And I hear the interpreter go, in Deutschland. John Grunewald was sitting out there, got his hand on his chin. He looked at it and goes, <laughs> Deutschland is the German for Germany. <laughs> Takes us 20 minutes to get across to the interpreter what germinate means. And it ain't talking about the motherland <laughs> or the fatherland or whatever Germany is. Fatherland, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, how did I get off on the preaching with an interpreter? Yeah, so he's up, he's up there. Thank you, Karen. And so he's, he's doing his thing, and they get done with the service, and they say, now anybody that wants to come and accept Jesus Christ as the Lord, please stand up. Everybody in the room, 1,500 people stand up. He turns to the church and says, tell them to sit back down. Now, you must not understand. What I'm asking you is, if you've never received Jesus as Lord, if you've never given your heart to him, if you've never had an experience with God like that, please stand up. All 1,500 people, he, he sits them down three times. And they finally the interpreter saying, they all are unsaved. <coughs> all 1,500 gave their heart to Jesus. And one the whole 1,500 people in that, that, where that assembly was. So, you know, God works like that. I said, God moves like that. And in the hour and the day we're living in, the church <clears throat> has to return to certain things in order to be that kind of powerful and that kind of zealousness and that kind of ability to go out and share Jesus with so much power and authority that whole multitudes are brought in in a sweep. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The, the Brill Cream salvations are not enough. Some of you are old enough to remember Brill Cream. A little dab will do ya. How many remember that, you know, that, that whatever slogan or whatever from the commercials? A little dab will do ya. Now, they may have got it from Fred Flintstone, yabba dabba do. I don't know. But anyway, <clears throat> a little dab will do ya. <laughs> Another story about Brill Cream. My brother one time took the toothpaste out of the toothpaste box and put it in the Brill Cream box and put the Brill Cream in the toothpaste box. And my dad was working second shift, and he got up about half asleep, <laughs> opened up a new box of Brill Cream, I mean of uh, toothpaste, <laughs> put it on a toothbrush. <laughs> he was not a happy camper. <laughs> okay. So the same was added to all that over 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in koinonia and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul. And many signs and wonders were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things in common. And here we go. Many signs and wonders. What are they? We're talking about the power of the age of the world to come. We must realize that the church was never called to be this mediocre, mealy-mouthed, hello, and let's have intelligent faith. Can I say something, and please don't take me on, there's nothing intelligent about faith. <coughs> faith is birthed out of the heart of God's Word. You believe things you can't see. In certain circles, they call that crazy. Hello? There are psychologists who tell you you're, de you're delusional. Faith is about, you know, well, look, look at Hebrews chapter 11. Let 
Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Listen to this. The evidence of things not seen. What's most people's narrative in the world? I ain't going to believe it until I see it. That's not believing. It takes no believing to, to see something and accept that it's there. Now, you've got, you got some philosophical folks that don't believe it's there. They're the crazies. Is it really a chair? Is it really there? Is it not just molecules in a stationary position? You're a loony bin. Okay? Why do they call blue blue? I don't care. We call it blue. Okay? I've associated the North Carolina Tar Hill colors with blue. We don't associate anything with Duke with it. <laughs> now, faith is the, is the substance of things. The title deed, the guarantee of things hoped for, the evidence, what, your faith, that's not intelligent. I'm believing that I've been healed before I feel healed, and I declare that I believe that I received my healing when nothing says I am. Takes faith. For by it the elders received a good report. Amen? Hallelujah. I mean, you look at this thing that they go through, and they talk, start talking about all the different guys in the Hebrews, of Hebrews uh, chapter 11, the Hall of Fame of Faith, and all the things they did, and all the, you know, marching around the walls. And listen, how many of you ever heard this term? To do the same thing over and over again without getting any, any different result and believing you will is the definition of insanity. Well, that whole Hebrew bunch that marched around Jericho for seven days was insane. Y'all hear you gone home. You can't use world's definitions to define things of the Word of God and things of the Spirit. It can't be done. And we're not crazy. People, people I guarantee you people thought I was crazy because we kept preaching the same thing. And we kept doing the same thing. And we wouldn't change to do something different just because it was different. And I wouldn't go to a church building seminar and try so-and-so's method because that's not what God told me to do. I did what God told me to do. And it took 35 years. But guess what? Here we are. Amen. I said, here we are. Amen. And we're just, we're just in the beginning of what we are. Amen. 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 Well, well, Pastor Ed, I mean, look at you. Church shrunk, shrunk. You lost your business part lease. Borrowing churches in a community center. And you're right. You got to make some changes. The Lord didn't tell me to change. I can't do what so-and-so did. Well, they're bigger than you. And that and $4.50 will get me a, you know, a vente white chocolate mocha Frappuccino, I mean, cappuccino with whip and drizzle from Starbucks. And Janice, shut the doors. Janice, get ready to run. <laughs> she drove separately this morning. Jerry be left behind. He's got his own car. She's gone. <laughs> I can't help it. I have an assignment. Faith says you do, you do what God said do, the way God said do it, until he tells you to do it different. Amen. And if he does, well, you know, somebody else might have to. I've looked at other people. Hello? And I see too many times people trying to copy somebody else's worldly method to grow or be successful, and it works because they're doing it the world way. You got numbers. Numbers don't mean anything. I've learned numbers don't mean anything. Well, did not Jesus have a huge following at one time? I remember when he lost down to 70. 
made one statement one day in a sermon and lost everybody. Except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. They all got up and boogied. Hello? Will you leave me also? Where else can we go? You're the ones who got the words of life. And after three and a half years of walking on water, casting out devils, raising the dead, miracle after miracle, so much that John said that I suppose if everything was written down that he did, the world itself could not contain the volumes thereof. There's 500 people following him. And 380 of those are flaking. How do you know that? Because they couldn't wait 10 days for the Holy Ghost to show up. By the time they got to the upper room, there was only 120 left. Now, flaky may have been too strong of a word. Granolas. Think about it. But that 120, they that have turned the world upside down have come hither. Boy, they took off. We can, a couple of weeks after his ascension, they got 8,120 in the church. Hello? We have to follow God. Now, faith is not intelligent. It's not, it's not logical. Not in the natural. And in the spiritual realm, it's totally logical. But in the natural realm, it's not logical. Y'all hear you going home. All right. And so, but they, the powers of the world to come. The church is so busy looking for the next gig, the next technique, the next this, the next that, to grow that we've forgotten what the, what the master said. Go to Mark's gospel, the 16th chapter. Now, when Mark's gospel is written more in line with a Gentile church than maybe Matthew. Okay? Now, remember, we have, we have four gospels. Three of them are called the synoptic gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke. John is, is the oddball. Okay? Many miracle signs, wonders that are recorded in Matthew are recorded in Luke and Mark. Very few are recorded in all four. Okay? They're, 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 the audience they were writing to was different. All right? Which I, this is why I like Mark so much because he just kind of, you know, lays it on the line. He's not trying to convince a Jew. He's just talking about Jesus is up and Jesus is going and here's what we do. All right? Now, I'm not discounting any other gospel. I'm just saying they're written to different groups of people with a different mindset behind why they're being written. Okay? Um, so we have here in Mark 16. I thought I was going to Mark 11, didn't you? No. Mark 16 and uh, verse 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Okay. Jesus would never condemn you. I don't know what upbraid means to you, but it sounded like he, was, he, he kind of told them off. Upbraided is not a, oh, actually, Martha says rebuked. We get this idea, Jesus would never rebuke you. He would never say anything that could hurt your feelings. Stop listening to this feel-good psycho babble junk that's coming out of the world and trying to infiltrate the church. We're not going to have masses of people coming to the kingdom of God trying to be sissy Christians. Or one guy said, there's an old song that used to be out, Brother Bill remembers this one. Um, we, we don't need any secret service Christians shouting hallelujah as we run behind the lines. Remember that one? Yeah. Who remembers that one? Y'all missed your half, half your life. My goodness. There's no need for Secret Service Christians. We need bold. We need bold as a lion. Amen. Except, and so he said unto them, go ye in. Now here, their unbelief. They're out there whining and, oh, yeah, Jesus. Died, yeah, yeah. And he shows up and says, and rebukes them, and then says, let's put a little flannel, slam on this. Get up out of here and go do what I told you to do. Go into the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. The, um, he that's baptized shall be saved. He that be baptized not, uh, is not baptized shall be damned. 
and these signs shall follow them that believe. <coughs> now get out there and get to work, and they, let's get something done for the kingdom. Hello. I'm not sure what kind of inspirational talk it was, but it wasn't one of them, hold up a red card if you feel stress while I give you your commission. We got military now. They hold up red cards if the drill sergeant is causing them stress. What are you going to do when there's another guy on the other end of a machine gun shooting at you? Red card. <laughs> I, I'm stressed. Not for long, pal. Hello? And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name. Now, now King James says, uh, cast out devils. Uh, literally, Greek says, exercise authority over demons. Okay? They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. They drink every deadly thing and shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Jesus commissions a supernatural, super spiritual church to go do and do what he said do, go preach the gospel. And we got charismatic Christians and Pentecostal Christians and word of faith Christians all chasing signs and wonders instead of the signs and wonders chasing them. Itsy bitsy spider came out. <laughs> if you case you're watching TV, a spider. They all just watched it descend. <laughs> I missed it. Y'all like wouldn't see if I was gonna walk into it, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. Nobody says anything to me until after they capture the rascal. <laughs> Let's see if Pastor runs into it. That's it. See if he just gets zapped and dies when it happens. Uh, <sighs> Praise the Lord. Now, where was it before the spider incident? Yeah. The supernatural. <laughs> Kill spiders. That, that's kind of in that, that serpent category. Kill the spider. Yeah, all right. Um, the church is commissioned to walk in the power of the worlds to come. Amen. And we, like I said, we got too many that are chasing the signs instead of the signs chasing them. Bring in a miracle service. Bring in a healing revivalist. I can actually envision us doing a tent revival out here. Getting into a certain time of year and bring in an old, I, I know one right now I can bring in, you know, get us a Hammond B3 with a Leslie. <laughs> do, do, do. I mean, just get after it, you know, get, with the spinning tweeter on top. <laughs> you got to know your music, church music. Can't meet music to understand that. All right. When they, when they press the pedals on the, on the organ, they can speed it up or slow it down. And so depending on how they're doing it, it changes that whole sound of that. And it's tubes, so it gets hot, and it really just, I mean, i got to have a Hammond B3 or C3 with a Leslie. <clears throat> All right? But go get, let's go get, have a healing revival or a miracle, miracle revival. And you know what's going to show up? Mostly Christians. I'm not opposed to it. I, like I said, I can see us doing it. But we're supposed to be carrying that to the world. We're supposed to be laying hands on the sick. We're supposed to be casting out devils. Hello? Are y'all here? Speaking in new tongues. I mean, devils should be afraid of us. We shouldn't freak out when a Blair Witch Project commercial comes on. Now, have anybody ever felt the demons come out of there when that came on? You could sense the demonic I mean, commercial, this commercial comes on. You're like, my God, the devil's in that commercial. But I start seeing some Keith, Keith Moore stuff. Demons are afraid of me. Demons are afraid of me. <laughs> Amen. Y'all hear you go home. 
You were finishing it. All right. Are you here? I mean, devils need to shake. I'm telling you, we need to get back to the day when we get up out of bed, a gong goes off in hell and says, they're up again. Are you here? I mean, we, it needs to be, hell needs to be like uh, Jean-Luc Picard. Red alert, red alert. They're out of bed again. They're coming with the name. They're coming with the word. They're coming in power. People are getting healed. Demons are bouncing off the walls from getting cast out. Instead of going, oh, <laughs> they got up. Go back to bed. Nothing to worry about. Hello. They saw somebody trying to lay hands on the sick the other day and thought it was us. Hello. No, Jesus has commissioned you. Jesus has commissioned me. And we started on this series. What did we say was the number one purpose and goal of everything we do in the church? To equip us to be evangelists, to evangelize, to go out and reach. And God did not send you out there with a BB gun. Are you here? I mean, he's sending you out with nuclear weapons. To destroy, you know, to destroy the works of the devil. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest, to destroy the works of the devil. I love the French Bible, translated back into English, says to reduce to zero the works of the devil. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the works that I do, Jesus said, shall ye do, and greater than these, because I go unto my Father. Folks, it's time we start showing up with people we cast devils out of. It's time we start showing up with people we got healed. It's time we start showing up with people we brought Jesus to them. Amen. Amen. And fill the house, of, fill this place, and fill it up with more people who are hungry, who can be discipled, and sent back out to replicate themselves. And to get the job done, and to get the work done, and to, and to get people out of the captivity and bondage they're in. This world is messed up. It's more messed up than we've ever imagined. Are y'all here? You've gone home. When I look at a picture of the Surgeon General of the United States of America, some man standing there in a dress and high heels with ugly legs. Now just, just throw that in there just for, just for whatever. Them ain't legs that need to be in high heels in a dress who wears like little Bo Peep outfits. They have pictures. We're messed up. And this is the one that's going to tell us what, who's helping and who's not. <laughs> oh, you're, you're transphobic. No, I'm normal. God said he created male and female, created he them. He did not create females. Are y'all here? You've gone home. He did not create us crazy. But this world's messed up. And, and kids, there, there's, there's, there's an article yesterday. Some 10-year-old trans drag queen is beginning therapy to transition. Ten. He needs therapy, not hormones. And his parents need to be arrested for child abuse. And the psychologist and the doctors need to be whooped. Not with bamboo sticks, with two-by-fours. Wood kiln, hard-dried two-by-fours. Maybe with a couple of nails in them. This is crazy. And the churches, instead of many of them saying, we've got to stop this, are going, we love everybody. I love everybody. They need the devil cast out of them. They need to encounter the power of God so strong that they can't withstand. 
Smith Wigglesworth got on a train in England one time, and, a, and, a, and an Anglican priest came and sat beside him. And all Wigglesworth was doing was reading his Bible. Didn't even talk to the guy. He was, he was caught up with the Lord. And after about five minutes, the, the priest jumps up, looks at him, and goes, my God, man, you convict me of sin, and ran out the back of the car. He didn't even say anything to him. But when you walk in the power like he walked in the power, and that, that glory was on him, and that anointing was on him, yes. it's the anointing that will convict the sin. Not, you, don't even have, you don't have to do it. <coughs> Remember Peter? Jesus just borrows his boat, preaches a sermon, got people on the seashore getting saved. You know, they launched that just a little bit so they could get out where he could preach without everybody being all over them. And Peter looks up at Jesus and says, depart from me, I'm a sinful man. Jesus didn't say you're a dirty, rotten scoundrel. Did he? Jesus, Peter goes, depart from me, Lord, for I'm a sinful man. He tells them, from this point on, I'm going to make you fishers of men. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. This is where we need to be walking. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. This is the place we need to walk. We need to walk in the authority of the church yes. and say enough is enough yes. of the lunacy and of the craziness and letting devils run everything. Yes. Yes. And voting for people just because they're going to give you something you like. Or they, you're on the same political party. I don't care what party you're in. If you're voting for somebody who, who supports anti-godliness, you shouldn't be voting for them. That's right. That's right. Yes. And stop hiding behind where well, they said they're a Christian. Many of you will say, or that, call me Lord, Lord. And I will say, Jesus said, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. That's not love. Well, tell Jesus. Go ahead and take it up with him. He happens to be the head of the church. Y'all hear you gone home. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Some of y'all left home, didn't you tell me you left? <laughs> Amen. Brother Bill's on it. He's getting more scriptures up there now. The pastor challenged me. I got to step up to the plate. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I want to get two or three more of you trained so that we can, we can just run this thing no matter who's here and who's not. By the way, welcome back, by the way, guys. How was the Midwest? Far, far away. In a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> and trust me, out there is another world. Okay. Now, we are, to, they, listen, they, they were, oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And fear came upon every soul. And many sign, wonders and signs were done by the apostles. These powers in this world to come of healing the sick, raising the dead, um, victory over demonic powers. We see that throughout the book of Acts. Hello. We see whole city riots started. Riots. Because a spirit of divination was cast out of a girl. Amen. I mean, Ephesus was in an uproar because Paul came in there and did something that they didn't like. And it was going to, it, 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 it affected their livelihood. They made money off of building little statues to Diana. And here they come casting devils out of folk. So they're getting saved and not worshiping Diana. And there's an uproar. Well, let's have some uproars. You Christians go hide in your churches. As a matter of fact, we're going to infiltrate your churches with unsaved people who've gone to theological cemeteries and who've learned how to operate in the hierarchy. And we're going to manipulate the scriptures and the doctrines and the creeds to mean something different 
than what Jesus did. And we're going to teach people that Jesus really wasn't born of a virgin, really wasn't the Son of God. He was just a good teacher. And then what God really, there's no such thing as a real devil. Evil's not really, it's just a, it's a concept. And what we want people to do is just love everybody. And let's have a universalist view of everything. Hello. That what God really wants is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little love. What the world needs now. Okay. Do not run out real quick and grab flowers off our front. We don't have enough. And put them behind your ears. And come here going, I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony and drink Coca-Cola. I can still see the commercial with all, all the hippies up on the hill singing about Coca-Cola. Are y'all here? You got home. And we, we let the world define love for us. Hello? There has to be a people. And let me say this. You may look around and say, where are they? You may look around and say, there's no one. We're the only ones left. But do not forget the message of Elijah and Elisha. Amen. Amen. And when he says, I only I am left, and God says, I have reserved unto myself 7,000 that have not bowed their knee to Baal. Now get up and go anoint Elisha to be prophet in your stead. Whiny face. Hello. So you got to look at this better than Elijah. Now, son, it's going to be okay. I just happen to have another 7,000 over here. You didn't know about, but that's okay. That was not what happened. He just got through killing all the prophets of Baal single-handedly. And some little harlot says, you tell him next time, tomorrow, tomorrow this time, I, I'll kill him. And he runs up, wait, is, what's wrong with you? You just got through killing 450 prophets of Baal. You saw God lick the altar up, the stones up, the sacrifice up, the, the whatever firkins of water up all at the same time. And some harlot says, I'm going to get you. And you running? There has to be a church that rises. And I got news for you. God has reserved to himself a people who are not about games, who are not about being cute, who are not about trying to manipulate terminology. I mean, I was telling, sharing with somebody the other day, we had somebody one time in the church, and they went over to a, a JDC center and came back. Everybody in the room got saved. Oh, really? That's awesome. They all got saved. Great. Yeah, we had them all lined up across the front. And we told them that if you do not want to receive Jesus and, and, and reject him, um, and you're not going to accept him as Lord, take a step backwards. And nobody took a step backwards. That was getting them all saved? Listen, we got a hard time getting some folks in church to raise their hand. I can say, who loves Jesus? Raise your hand. And five of you still won't put it up. And I know you love Jesus. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Just because you didn't take a step. That, the Bible doesn't say go into all the world and, those that, and, and get people not to reject Christ. So you manipulated the narrative. Hey, when, when I first came to the church, we had a guy in the church. He knew how to push my buttons, and I was young. He's just really, I mean, I can be really honest with you. At that time, I was about 20, I was about 28. 
I had a whole lot of jock still in me. Okay? I mean, I just won't that far removed from it. You, got, you understand what I'm saying? God's done a work in me in the last 30 plus years. 36-ish. But he, I mean, I'm thinking, he's a good thing he didn't push that button too far because I, I, I would have jacked him. Actually, one thing on the telephone, hey, we'd been in person, I probably would have. If we'd been in person, I would, I'd think I'd just knocked him out because he pushed it and pushed it and pushed it. And then goes, I've lowered my voice. Do you, I mean, do you know I lowered my voice? Because the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. So you push all the buttons, get me spun up, and then now you're going to be Mr. Super Spiritual and turn away wrath. It didn't turn it away. It made it worse. The only good thing in his place was he won't right there. Now, I'm, just being, I'm just being real here, folks. Okay? Now, today I wouldn't even have gotten, gone down that road with him. I would just say, okay, bye. Go on. We don't have time. I don't have time for this. You know? <laughs> on that moment that day. How did I bring that up? Where y'all? Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So he brings this girl in from work. He worked at the car wash. She got saved. After church, they're over there. This girl's crying. He's over there in his Teal Osborne posture, ministering to her. So I, I kind of just, well, I'm the pastor, so I'm I'm just kind of casually sliding over near. See what's going on. He's telling her, I know you're saved. She's going, I don't want to be. She prayed a prayer with him because he manipulated her into something. She, she's telling him, I didn't mean it. I didn't want to be. Oh, but you're saved. You prayed the prayer. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, <laughs> duh. So finally, I heard enough of it. And I said, hey, that, this, is what, this, this spun him up because that's when he left the church, not long after that. I said, I said, Let me, I said, I said honey, you're saying you don't want to. I said, she said, no, I just prayed the prayer to get in off my case. I said, look at me. Because I'm not going to let her go out there thinking, dealing with am I saved or not saved because I really didn't mean it and be in that state of confusion where God can't really deal with her because I said look if you didn't mean it you're not saved okay I said now God loves you and the door is always open and if you want to come to him he's there for you but I don't want you to leave here confused, thinking you're something and you're not, because he's trying to tell you you are. Okay? We don't need that. We don't need manipulation salvations. Are you here? I've seen altar calls given all kinds of ways. If you want to receive Jesus, squeeze the hand of the person next to you. They could have had a twitch. Everybody stand up. Everybody hold hands. Everybody's okay, okay. If you want to see Jesus, squeeze the hand of the person next to you. And somebody has a twitch, and the other guy goes, well, they just got saved. What, what are you? No, I, I had a cramp in my hand. This is the Mickey Mouse stuff we don't need in the church. What we need is power where the masses come running. All right, are you here? That they're, they're crying out to God to save them. Amen. Yes. We're coming into that. Now, God's reserved the people who have not compromised with the world's methods of doing stuff that he will raise up in this hour. And I know there are people praying around the world. There are people praying for America and other countries. 
that are seeing huge revivals. Where Jesse and Cap just got from, they had the number of people they had in that meeting with the risk factor involved of getting to that meeting. What risk factor? Death? Could have been killed? You had people coming from a, from a country that um, evangelizing is a death penalty, penalty event? Who came to the meeting on the Holy Ghost? Because, see, they love God. They don't have any teaching. They don't know how to operate and stuff. They just know they love God, and, they, you know, they don't know what to do. And Jesus is appearing to Muslims all over the world. He's appearing to them. Glory to God. And we got to have intelligent yet same. You know. You need to be a hand laying on, devil casting out, Bible toting, tongue talking, I mean, word of faith believing, uh, Holy Ghost, go to that, get after him, believer. Amen. Well, I'm scared they might say something ugly to me and call me one of them. Okay. One of them what? You know, one of them evangelicals. Ooh. I had a neighbor one time, you know, she didn't like the guy who cut a tree down because he tried to evangelize her. Good job. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Amen. She called it something weird. We didn't even call it evangelize. She called, uh, I forgot what he called, how she termed it. I'm thinking, Huh? Not, no, no, it was, it, started, it was like evangel, evangelize, evangel him or something, him, her. I'm like, well, he's got a bigger mission than cutting your tree down. He's trying to save you from hell, stupid. Y'all hear, faith, uh, faith will work in our lives. The victory that we seek and desire should be shared with other people. Our expedition, our mission, our track, our trek, our journey is to take this to people. And we're not the, listen, there are people praying for you in other countries right now. I was, I was, uh, I had something going on. I just, I, I pulled somebody aside and said, look, I need for you to pray for me about such and such. And they said, well, that makes sense now. God woke us up in the middle of the night and had us praying for you about that. Well, hallelujah. Well, if God could have him praying about that, he can have us praying about the church getting her job done. And there's churches in Africa and churches in other places praying for the American church to wake up out of its stupor and wake up out of its games and wake up out of its skinny jeans, tunic top, bed head, smoke machine, light show, Christianity and have a display of power and the anointing that shakes a nation to its core. We've had revivals in the past that shook the nation. Finney's revivals closed all the brothels and the pubs and everything else. They weren't out with signs going, we're Christians, we shouldn't, you shouldn't be drinking. We're Christians, you shouldn't be going into the strip club. They didn't have to. The customers got saved. You can't stay in business without customers. Are y'all here? You've gone home. And they got shut down because of revival. A sweeping revival. That will start from this point and spread up and down the eastern seaboard of the United States of America. 
and masses shall be brought in. Multitude shall be turned. The light of light shall shine into their hearts, and the glory of the Lord shall rest upon them, praise God. And there shall come out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and they will come out of every religion on the earth, and they will come and to know the Lord Jesus Christ, because the power and the glory and the anointing of God is being released in this hour, for the hour has come, and the day has come for the Lord to send forth and to fulfill his word that he spoke in the past. And it shall be as it were a suddenly unto you as I move, says the Lord. The masses shall shake at the sound of thy coming. And great fear shall come upon those who work iniquity. And they will be put in disarray and confounded because the army of God has risen and established and taken her place and marches forth in the power and the anointing and the glory and the signs of the ages to come shall be released as the earth has seen yet heretofore. For both the former and the latter rain shall come upon you in the first month of this outpouring. And the tide of God shall sweep, shall sweep in a moment away the efforts of evil for decades that have been wrought and established and planned for decades shall be swept and great shall be the glory of the Lord upon the earth. And the rejoicing in the camp of the armies of the Lord shall come up as a sacrifice to the Most High. And my glory and my presence shall be seen in, in thy faces and in thy actions in the things that you do for me. And never Will you be the same again because of what I'm doing in the earth? The hour is upon you. The time has come. It is released upon you now, says the Most High. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. You see? You can get complacent in your, and I'm not speaking, well, Mike, I'm still under the spirit of prophecy. Let me just sh share. You can speak, I mean, you can live in a stage of complacency, gifted, equipped, empowered, and because of that complacency, lack opportunity. But then you get to the place of opportunity, and Jesse, and cap, what happens when you show up in a place of opportunity? The anointing, healing power. People get saved. People get baptized in the Holy Ghost. People get healed. The power of God's in manifestation. And then Satan has done everything he can to lure the church into a stupor of complacency. But Satan will be quoting Admiral whoever from, Hawaii, from Japan in World War II. Whichever one was on the ship after they bombed Pearl Harbor. Huh? Hirohito. I am afraid. 
that all we have done is awakened a sleeping giant. <laughs> Satan will be quoting that. All we've done is awakened the sleeping giant that rises up and there'll be nothing. Once we entered World War II in the Pacific Theater, it was just a matter of time. And the only reason it was a matter of time is because they emaciated the, the uh, fleet at Pearl Harbor. So we went and built a bunch of ships real quick and went and kicked butt. I, I mean, is that too harsh? Buttocks. That's true. We got one of them sitting down in Wilmington in the port down there. I forgot how many battle stars and flags, they, I mean, battle flags and stars it has, the USS North Carolina, but it's got a bunch involved in every major Pacific excursion in World War II in the Pacific Theater. Oh, glory. <laughs> well, it was, you woke up the sleeping giant, and it was a bad deal. The church is being awakened. The restlessness that you sense. Hello? In the spirit is the awakening. I said it's the awakening. Hallelujah. Of the glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle. Hallelujah. The empowered church. The anointed church. That rustle. That, that, that restlessness. When you, uh, you, you go, I, I love The Longest Day with John Wayne and all those guys in it. You know, Robert Mitchum, Eddie Arnold. I mean, that, it's a great World War II movie. Red Buttons, who can't hear after the bells at St. Marie St. Inglace. You know, bing, bing, bing. He got, a paratrooper that got hung up by the bell tower. They have a parachute hanging up there still. Because it's a tourist place. <laughs> so with a dummy on it, yeah. Hello. And um, they're all sitting on the ships. We got to go. You know, Eisenhower's trying to decide, do we go or not go? The, water, the weather's not good. The waters are high. They're, the seas are turbulent. Do we go or not? You, you got a quarter of a million troops sitting over here, every, at least a quarter of a million, sitting on boats, puking and everything, because you got them on the boats ready to go, to cross that channel and to attack Normandy. They're all restless. They're all restless because... The anticipation of doing what they got to do, they're just restless. They're ready to go. Let's go. If we're going to do it, let's do it. And there's a restlessness in the body of Christ. But the word cometh. Go. Go. Orders. Go. Go. And so we go. So we go. We march forward. The sleeping giants awake. Hello? The game playing's over. Cool is out. Power is in. Hello? I said, cool is out. Well, you got to be hip. You know one thing, because we, we, we got to reach the, the young people, so you got to be like them. You know one thing young people can't stand? It's old folks trying to act like them to, to be cool. They don't like it. If I show up down to a bunch of kids with sagging, <laughs> hello? When my Sylvester and Tweety boxes on, I don't have any. I just, just, just trying to, you know, I'm trying to be cool. They're not impressed with that. Come in power. Come in authority. Come in the anointing. And you can be in a three-piece vest or suit with your IBM sunglasses. I mean, IBM glasses on with fake lens. Because it's the look. 
You can come, you can come in everything the, that the modern church says you can't come in. But if you come in power, and these came not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the power and spirit that their faith would not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Bill got hung up in the holster. Let's don't ever start using Siri to do this, though. She'll have you in the book of uh, Esther or Susanna, you know, some apocryphal book. Okay, inside family joke. All right. Not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Now listen, that just don't mean words. That means enticing. Tech. My speech and my preaching was it not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Next verse. All right. I want to leave you with that, that your faith, why, why did he come? Look at that. Why did he come? He came not with enticing words of man's, okay, of, of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. Why? Why? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of, of men, but in the power of God. What do we do with verses like this when we're trying to be cute? Huh? What are we doing with verses like this? Are we just negating the reality that the Apostle Paul? Hello? The foremost authoritative establisher of doctrine in the church declares, and we're talking about one of the most intelligent men of his day. We're not talking about some, listen, Peter won't too bright. He was anointed, but he won't too bright. All right, he's a fisherman. They took note of them. They were ignorant and unlearned men, but they'd been with Jesus. Who was that? That was Peter and his bunch. Okay? So we're talking about, so, so Peter got what he got supernaturally. Paul comes along. Here is the most, the most intelligent New Testament writer one of the most intelligent men of his day studied at the feet of Gamaliel, Gamaliel, G guy, the GL guy, okay, studied at his feet, was a Jew of the Jews, was a Pharisee, was a freeborn Roman, and he doesn't come along and go, look, guys, now listen, to reach the Gentiles, we got to do this. He's writing to the Corinthian, that carnal bunch. He said, I didn't come to you trying to be cute. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing now. I didn't come to you with the new church growth model narrative. I came to you not with words that man's wisdom said would entice you. But I came in the demonstration of the spirit and in power. Because that, I did not want your faith to stand in those manipulative things, but in the power of God. Hello. So church, we're calling you. We're calling you. Rise to your place. Recognize the rumblings of the Spirit. Connect, but what can I do? 120 turned the whole world upside down. 
We could at least do a fourth. Amen. We need to adopt the Larry the Cable Guy narrative. Get her done. Hello? You see, we look at big ministries on television, and we look at all the fancy programs, and we look at all the books on here's what you got to do to do this. And we forget, think not, think no thought for what you will say in that hour. But the Holy Ghost will give you the words to speak. I'm just messing on Bill now because he's going after it. <laughs> it's as hard as he can go. Keeping up with me is not easy. I'm just going to be honest with you. Because you just don't know where I'm going next. <laughs> Anybody ever see the John Wayne movie, um, El Dorado, where Mississippi had the sawed-off shotgun? They like, put it in the holster, and when he shot it, it just went. <laughs> Some of my sermons are like that. <laughs> <laughs> Scatterbarreled it. Amen. When they bring you into the synagogues and magistrates and powers or authorities, take no thought how you, how, uh, what thing you shall answer or what you shall say. Why? Because I'll give you the words to say. That's what I'll end up saying. Um, hold on. I'm gonna get, for the Holy Ghost shall teach you what in that hour what to, you ought to say. <clears throat> People could not, they may get bad, and it may tick off, the, tick off the demons in them, but they cannot withstand the counsel and the wisdom and the glory, and the power of the Spirit in you. Amen. Hallelujah. And many, and those that resist, let me tell you something, folks. There's time, there is a time that we're entering into right now where we're going to see things like people resisting the gospel Oh, child of the devil and full of mischief, you do pervert the ways of God, and you'll be blind for a season. That's not the love of God. Yes, it is for all the people they're trying to stop from getting saved. And he went forth looking for somebody to lead him about. See, our narratives have discounted. Things like that. Because God's love, and he would never do that to anybody. Let's just be spot. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, or the one. Star Trek. The Wrath of Khan. Ending scene. Or near the end. Right before they play Amazing Grace on bagpipes and shoot them off to another planet. Am I right? Yep. Spock! Anyway. Y'all do remember the Apostle Paul's Damascus Road experience? It wasn't a social visit. Y'all hear you going home? Jesus knocking him off that horse was not a social visit. It was a get saved to go to hell now visit. Because I'm done with you persecuting my church. It's hard for you to kick it. I'm Jesus whom thou persecutest. Jesus was not a happy camper. I'm the love of God manifest in the flesh, appearing unto you in this hour. Forget the hippie love stuff. Jesus' love for humanity dictated he stopped Paul from what he was doing. Now, Paul was bright enough to make a decision that to live is better than to die. Hello. And he says, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. What is that? You didn't run up a tree. You don't need to be up, son. 
So we're talking about the church of power and authority. Not of, not of hate. We love people. But we've got to walk in the authority and the power that lets us reach people and stop playing games about these things that aren't the love of God and aren't the way the Lord would handle it. Amen. You know, Herod was sitting on his throne. They began to worship him. The angels smote him and he was eating of worms. And then, that's right, and then died. After he got to eat with worms. It was not a pleasant death. The angel smote him. The angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. He was eating the worms that gave up the ghost. Doesn't that just sound wonderful? A loving God. No. I am the Lord. I'll not share my glory with any man. Amen. Do my work. Walk in my power. Walk in my authority. Amen. Amen. And but the word of God grew and multiplied. We're not having enough worm eating stuff, apparently, when the church grows and multiplies as a result of a judgment on those who would withstand the work of God. In many cases, we're putting them in the pulpits and putting priest robes on them and calling them reverend. And there needs to be more when we come to, when you come together, I'll be there in the spirit to turn such a one over to Satan for the destruction of their flesh that their spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Where's that going on at? We're about we're, we're coming to the world, the powers of the world to come. We're coming into a place. Brother Brother Sumrall, I heard him, 1981, 80, 80, 81. I was at Ramah. He was there. He said, before the Lord returns, the day of Ananias, the days of Ananias and Sapphira will return to the church. Why? Because God's got to clean his judgment begins at the house of the Lord. God's going to clean house in the church and with the Mickey Mouse stuff. And out of that's going to emerge a glorious church for the faith, power, and the anointing of God. And it's going to go, it's going to go bonkers crazy winning people for Jesus. And I have gone too far, too long. You know, anybody know why Brother Summerall preached the way he did? Every day of his life. He had a vision as a young man. He was down in South America. And uh, he was trying to rent some place to, you know, hold a meeting and nobody would do it. And he, he was praying before the Lord and he had a vision. He saw a Bible and he saw a casket. The Lord didn't even say anything to him. The vision showed him a Bible and showed him a casket. Either you preach or you'll die. He lived the rest of his life with that driving him. And I'm telling you, he'd wear three assistants out a year at 67 and 70 years old. They couldn't keep up with him. He'd run them in the ground. Young men, you know, traveling with him, help, you know, help keep his itinerary taken care of. and help. He'd go through three of them a year. They couldn't keep up with him. I'm telling you. Man, was on, he went somewhere and said, I have to have that hall tonight. I must preach. And he said, we can't do it. You don't understand. I have to preach in there tonight or I'll die. Now, they might have thought he was crazy, but they gave him the place. And the rest of his ministry was wide open like that. He would not back out of a parking place. If he couldn't park, go where he could drive out of it because he didn't back up for anything is what he said. His garage had a, gr a door on both ends because he didn't back up for anything. He's always going forward. And he said, the days of Ananias and Sapphira will return to the church. God's going to clean house. You think Trump came in to clean the swamp? You wait till the master cleans the swamp in the church. 
and gets rid of all the political junk and gets rid of all the, um, the, the stuff in the church that don't belong there and all the lies and all the planted people in hierarchies that are of the devil, sent as emissaries of the devil to undermine and to destroy the effectiveness of the church. If you don't think the Methodist church was called of God, anointed of God, and empowered by God, go back and study their history. They had like fire baptized Methodists. They, they were Pentecostals. What's happened now? Open doors, open hearts, open minds. I can't even, can't even wrap my words around that one. Hello? We want you saved. But we're not going to say you're okay, I'm okay, we're all okay, let's go do our thing together. We're not going to have pastors who violate the Word of God just by their own label of themselves. And take pleasure who do the things that God said aren't even spoken of in the dark. Not only agree with it, but take pleasure in those that do it. Go to Romans. You read it. God will visit America. And there will be a house cleaning. And there will be revival. And there will be judgment on those, woe be to those who cause any of these little ones to stumble. That's, that's a judgment. Woe be is not a good terminology to have aimed at you. You don't want to be in front of a woe be. Okay? Just telling you. If you don't know what it means, it ain't good. Amen. So what are we going to do? We're going to rise up. We're going to answer the call. We're going to respond to the moving of the Spirit. We're going to say, the days of church playing are over. Well, we're older. It don't matter. Ask Caleb what he did when you get to heaven. He was 85 when he got his mountain. He had to wait 45 years to get his mountain after the rest of the crowd didn't do what they were supposed to do. But he got his mountain. I said, he got his mountain. Amen. He went to Joshua and said, now look, now I was 40 years old with you when we came over and spied out the land. And I saw this piece of property. And I, and I, and, and I, told, I told Moses, I want that. And then all that bunch of dodo brain tin spies came out and got all the people messed up. We spent 40 years out there walking around. Then it's been another five years. We've had to go around and take cities and do all this kind of stuff. But um, I'm 85 now. And I'm on my mountain. So he went and kicked the giants off his mountain. 85. Who's this old geek coming up here? Anointed. Full of faith. Empowered by God. Hello? Well, I'm older, you know. We've got to leave this to the young people. The young people need the leaders of the generation who walk with God and know where to go and, you know, and to guide all this zeal and all this excitement down in the right place to go take this nation for God. Hello? The Joshua generation did not show up on the scene as a bunch of 20-year-olds. They entered into their fullness at 80. Hello. <laughs> yeah. The Amalekites, the great fans, you know. He just went in and took his mountain. He didn't even take, well, he did take names because we know who they were. They're the Anna Anakims. So he kicked back in and took names and got his mountain. Stand up.
Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this word. Thank you for the fact that this people are going to rise up. They're going to go do their job. They're going to walk in yours. The, the, the sense of purpose rises in them in the name of Jesus. The sense of this is the hour, that restlessness they've had in them, wondering what it is, it's the hour. We're entering into the hour. We're entering into the time to fulfill our purpose and destiny as a people of God in the earth. In Jesus' name, let them take up the torch. Let them take up the banner and let them run with fervor and fulfill your call upon their lives to turn the nations to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You're not too old. I said, you're not too old. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. Those join us today, I'm talking to you. This is for you too. Let's run. Let's do this, get this done for the kingdom. Join us next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad. God bless you. Remember these words of 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God bless you. We love you. We will see you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Good day.